how has the military forces grown? Because like, there used to be like one set of army barracks, but now there's three or four in different like industrial estates. How, how have they grown? I think, again, I'm not a soldier, and I'm no. not a military person, but to my knowledge, and um, some of the work I've been doing here in the museum, the army, for instance, from the beginning of the 19th century, from the beginning of the 20th century, get our centuries right, and through the First World War, the army had a massive presence yeah. in, in, in Warminster and surrounding villages. We had thousands and thousands and thousands of men coming into the area during the First World War. Um, Salisbury, Plain, Salisbury Plain became the training area after the First World War. It probably always was a little bit beforehand, but much more so after the war. And there are lots of army towns around the Salisbury Plain. And, and now, modern day, you've got lots of the army being brought back from abroad, where they would have spent many years in Germany and other places in Europe and around the world. They don't do that now, so a lot of them have been concentrated back in this area. Although the army itself is not as big as it used to be, so it's sort of it, it's quite difficult to quantify how how much of a difference that's actually made to the population of the military because the military themselves are not as big as they were. How has daily life like changed within the 20th century to before to like kids around now? If I talk about me personally, I lived in a small village outside Warminster as, as a child and moved into Warminster, which to me was like a big metropolis. Although in fact it was a small market town, and you could buy anything you wanted in Warminster. You could buy shoes. You could buy fresh meat from butchers, various butchers you could go to. You could buy fresh fish that would come up from the coast every day. They have places in Devon, Brixham, would send fish here every day and it would be wet fish counters. A lot of that's gone. You can't buy shoes in Warminster unless you go to somewhere like, I hate to name it, but factory shop. I can't think what else you'd call it. You can't buy good quality shoes in Warminster. You have to go out of the town. Very limited choice in clothing, especially for men. Um, there are only two butchers left in Warminster, real butchers. You have to go to the supermarket and buy your meat ready packed. There's no one in Warminster, again, independent, that sells what I call wet fish. But the two supermarkets, the two main supermarkets in Warminster, have a, a wet fish counter. So the shopping has undergone a vast change. Lots of things you can't buy in Warminster. You have to go out of the town to find a, you know, the big 
multinational stores. So people go to Bath, they go to Salisbury, where, where the big shops are. And you go to one big town, and it's just like every other big town. They've all got the same shops, they've all got their Marks and Spencers, they've all got their, you know, Dorothy Perkins. It's like you could be any to any town in England you could be in without knowing where you are. Is that the sort of thing you were wanting to know? Yeah. That's a big change. Shopping's a big change. Well, yeah. Everything has changed, really. As it would do within a, in a hundred years or even fifty years. Everything changes all the time. So, overall, how do you personally feel Warminster has changed from when you first came to Warminster to what it is now? Do you think it's changed for better or for worse? Do you think it's grown more as a community? Or it, that's, that's a difficult question in a way because it clearly is very different to when I was a young person. It's very different now. The, I've just said that the marketplace is, is very different. There are a lot more people who live here. The housing, the housing is very different. There used to be big council estates in Warminster. They don't exist anymore. You have um, social housing now. It, so that kind of stuff is different. Schools are very different because we used to have grammar schools and secondary schools. You don't have those anymore. You have comprehensives. You still have Warminster School, which is a private school. That's been here certainly much longer than the last century. 1707. Yes. It was here. been here a long time. Um, technology has changed everything. Travel has changed. The, the world, I can remember a teacher saying to my son when he was at school, the world is a much smaller place now. And he thought that she meant the world had shrunk. But actually, I mean, it has shrunk. I would think nothing of going on holiday to Australia, New Zealand, South America. I have done it in the last few years, and I will probably continue to do it. But that wouldn't have happened when I was a young woman. So that's, that's massive change. I've got economic freedom in a way that women in previous generations never had. So that's a massive change, you know, economic freedom, my own car, my own home. Go on all afternoon talking about this. I'm sure you don't want that. <laughs> In fact, I've forgotten what you asked me now. What did you say? Uh, overall, how is it? How has Warmster changed and like developed as a community and as a town itself? Is that's some people will tell you that Warmster is a very um, it's a very insular place. They they don't seem to have the lots of people will say they don't have a, a, a big community spirit in Warmster because they have groups groups. But other people will tell you that it's not like that at all. That you know, people do mix really well with other people. So that's quite that's quite hard. It's, I think it all depends on how what you are, as, what you're like as a person, your own interests, how well you can mix in with the town itself. Where the town is, is it's lovely. It's in a nice place. You've got the railway. You're on a major bus route. You're near a motorway. You know. So from, from the point of view of it being within the country, it's. I think it's in a good area. Perhaps I would say that because I live here. <laughs> Although I'd rather live by the seaside, I have to say. Okay, thank you very much. Is that all? Yeah. Oh, that was quite painless.